No, these, this is out of a little electric fan like that there. Motor and that one's a little bit bigger, but this is about the standard size. And they, they're, uh, there it is. They, they're not really bad uh, to take apart. And if you got time, this is not a profitable um, deal, but if you got the time, put my glasses on. But what you got in here now, I can strip the copper out of these pretty easy. Um, And I've got, I've probably got I probably got 10 of these things, maybe more. Um, let's see, will that come out of there? Nope. Okay. What you need to do take all these now these these screws are going to hit the floor but i got a magnet thing that i run down there and it'll pick them all up um See what what I got there now is this big plastic piece will come off of here. I still ain't got me a daggone trash can. I'm I'm going to do it. I'm so tight with the money. Uh, now, sometimes with this cast aluminum like that, uh, let's see what's holding that in. I don't. That comes off. I can't remember how I got that off. But you can take now my grandson he calls this a pickaxe and he has lost a bunch of these things for me. Well, that's not breaking too easy. There it goes. There's that part. That's cast aluminum. Let me screw that out. So there you got that. Am I even recording? Yeah. I swear I got to get a better system than what I got. Now, this part here is steel. So, I'll throw it over for right now. Um, 
This part here is a little different than what I've had before, so. I don't know. What's holding that on? Oh, okay. Now see this part here with the with the copper on it. This here, I can beat this apart. Um, there's a couple of ways to take that apart, and I will show you how to do that in another video. But it's not a lot of copper, but it's copper. It's every little bit, sir, you know. And uh, this right here. Is another piece of cast. Um, I'm gonna try to. I don't want to hurt my finger sometime. There it goes. And that's steel. This. He should pop out of there. That's a nylon bushing. So here is, let me go ahead and disassemble this completely. All right, this is a uh, cast aluminum. This is cast aluminum. That's cast. So you got that. And that's clean copper. This here, you got some little snippets of wire in here if you want to go after me. It's a very tiny amount, but I go after it. I don't, uh, I mean, I keep harping on it. it Adds up, guys. I wish I had me a trash can in here. Dad, don't it. Um, but there you go. Piece of nylon. And that. That's, that's what you get out of there. Now, um, uh, there's a couple of ways you can take this loose. Uh, probably the way I'll do it, I ain't going to do one today. I was just want to show you how, how, what's involved on taking them things down. Let's see. Um, just not a lot. Of course, I, I just have a... <laughs> I mean, I just have a sheer love of taking this stuff apart. I don't know why. I'm not even questioning why. I just do. And there's no money in it. I mean, I get a little bit of money back, but uh, I'm trying to see if there's a weld seam on any of these bend in there, but I tell you what, I can't see a, I can't see, these are laminated, but, you know what, 
I'm just going to do it. What I do, I put it in the vise. I take my little handheld cutoff saw and I cut, strip one side of this off all the way around and then I lay it down and I pull these out. But before I do any of that, I take the torch and I burn this string that's wrapped around that. And that, that automatically speeds things up a little bit. You don't have to worry about them strings. I'm thinking there's a way you know what, I've never tried to take the string off of these things like this, but I think I'm, I think I'm going to try it. You know what, that's working. It surely is. How about that? I never did that. I always, all this time I... But that's, that's a later deal. So that's going in there. Um, these are going in there. Now, I've got about 10 of them, but I ain't going to touch them today. But I just want to show you that. Uh, I'm going to try to do something productive every day. Um... On this stuff, and I just noticed a while ago I've got another stack. By the way, I've lost my pickup stick this morning. I've left it somewhere on my can route. I had to go back on Amazon and just order me <coughs> order me another one. And at the rate, I, it's cheaper to get a two pack. Um. You really have, when you're ordering stuff off of Amazon, uh, I feel like talking at you with my other hat on. <laughs> and I ain't gonna put my imbecile hat on. How about that? Uh, on Amazon, and I'm a big Amazon guy. Um, uh, You can find the same product. You can look on Amazon. You can find one that gives you a price. And if you keep looking around, you'll find that same product in some other area. Cheaper, most cases, or even a little more. Uh, and I was looking. I was going to get one. And it was uh, $7 and some odd cents. And then I got to looking around, I find this same pickup stick. <laughs> the same pickup stick for nine dollars and some change, and it's a two pack. So, as often as I lose these things, I might as well get me a two pack. Uh, but then again, there's other things. You find a product for, let's say, for example, like a dollar. And then you keep looking around, same item. You might find it for 50 cents. That's not going to be the price, but I'm just saying, you know, it, uh, it's just, it pays to look. It pays to look just because Amazon is Amazon. You know, I, I swear by Amazon. I don't, I don't have nothing. I don't get nothing local unless I look at Amazon first to see if they got it. And 99% of the time, they got it. And of course... I get free shipping because I'm signed up for that uh, Prime membership that costs five dollars and five or six dollars a month. But I save more than that because then I get the free shipping. 
So, uh, and I, uh, uh, an average person can't get that prime for that cheap. Uh, you have to be somebody that's kind of on hard times. You don't have a lot of income, and with me, you know, I get a I get a a, a hundred dollars in food benefits a month and stuff like that. So I'm in the system, and that means I can qualify for that thing that Amazon has, where you get that prime at a, a reduced rate. I used to wouldn't tell anybody I was getting stamps, but they're not really stamps. But, you know, I've got to the point, uh, anybody with any sense knows that if, if you're in my situation, I get, I get, uh, 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 <sighs> dang. I only get seven hundred and fifty something dollars a month from Social Security, and I've got no other income. And uh, anybody knows I'm going to qualify for Medicaid. Medicaid, I don't need it, but I have it uh, because I'm through the VA, and plus I have. I have Medicare. So, um, I have to tell you this, guys. I'm, my mindset is this. That if they cut off all these federal little perks that I get, Honestly, I couldn't say squat because the government doesn't owe me. Don't they owe me my social security? But they don't owe me food stamps. They don't owe me Medicaid. Um, that's just the way I feel about it. And a lot of people now think the government owes you. They owe you good roads. They owe you stuff like that and defense of the country and stuff like that. That's what they owe you. But I, that, but that's why I get a reduced rate on my prime membership on uh, on uh, Amazon. And I'm still sucking coffee. <laughs> uh, I'm still sucking coffee, and it's like 2 o'clock. I made my trash run today, and I was pretty well loaded up with cans coming back. That one place, that neighbor that has that drinks a lot of beer, they had, uh, I counted them a while ago. I, I got 62 cans out of that, out of that one trash can of his day and I might not have got them all I think I did and went by Miss Caroline's picked up picked up about 35 or 40 Miss Ashley didn't have me any out there uh, my lady friend over there that I call my accident lady friend uh she didn't have me any, but across the street, somebody had to try to sit out and had a vacuum cleaner sit there. And so, used to, I would haul in vacuum cleaners in, but I don't do that. <sighs> I don't do that anymore. I just, if it's got a cord on it, I'll cut the cord. So that means I'm a cord cutter. <laughs> I used to get on the pole about that on Scrap and Pilot, man. Calling him a cord cutter. <laughs> but now I'm a cord cutter, so shut up. <laughs> uh, but, um, let's see, who else did I get? This, and Miss, and Jacoby. Uh, I got I got a couple bags from Jacoby. So I had quite a few cans this morning. 
and the cord off of a vacuum cleaner and there was something else and I was too late to get anything out of my shells that the trash truck had already run that's the one where I was into their trash the other day and the trash truck slipped up on me I didn't even know they was there and I was sitting there talking to my camera and all of a sudden somebody said what and I looked up and there was a trash man he thought I was talking to him <laughs> oh my goodness but <laughs> I, I've been looking at some of these videos all that snow and stuff man I, I've seen them some of these some of these YouTube people I watch, and, and golly, and then I used to could handle the cold. And one time, this had to be 60s, late 60s, before my daughter was born, and we still lived up in the mountains. And the place me and my wife was staying was about two miles from town. And I was running to the third shift, which meant I had to be there at 11 o'clock. And I got, <laughs> I got the notion, well, I'm just, I, the car wouldn't start. I can't miss the shift, so I walked. And I figured I'd catch a ride with my uh, cousin-in-law. <laughs> if there is such a thing, maybe my cousin Stanley. And in the morning when I come back. Uh, so I started walking. Now, there's some railroad tracks that runs beside the road. And it goes right by the place where I work at. So I'm got, I got to thinking that railroad track's got to be shorter distance than going by the highway and all that stuff. And there won't no traffic out. I couldn't catch a ride or anything. So I decided to walk down railroad tracks. And boy, was that a mistake. I left about 9.30 walking and I got on them tracks and I totally forgot about the, the tracks go across the river. <laughs> and I had to walk that railroad trestle in the dark and I guess I might have fell two or three times there, not being able to see, and and that's not like walking on the pavement. You're walking on the tires. And if a train come along, I don't know what the crap I'd done if I got caught on that bridge. <laughs> and it, it took me three and a half hours to walk to my job. I got there late. And when I got there, my legs was so cold, they felt like people were sticking pins in it. I could, I could hardly move them. It took me another hour after I got there to get thawed out to where I could work. And you couldn't go on them. That machine I worked on, it it it, it was a knitting machine that that made lace. It was a textile and it made lace. And that, them things, they're dangerous when you're in good shape. So I couldn't go on there all numbed up. I had to actually be thawed out for a while. <sighs> Lord have mercy, that was called Fairlane Sportswear. And why in the world they call it sportswear, I don't know, because we made lace. We knit, It was lace that they make gowns and wedding dresses and all that stuff. And it, it was big old, the, 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 the boat of lace was 20 foot wide. And it, it makes a roll, but it's 20 foot wide. 
And I forget how many bobbins was in that thing. And you had, if, 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 a, if a thread broke, you had to catch it pretty quick or you're going to have a big old gap hole in, in your lace there. So you, you, you have to be alert. <laughs> Man, I was so cold. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lord have mercy. The things I've done, the foolish things I've done. But man, I sure froze my butt off that night and I never crossed my mind to walk the railroad track again. <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. It was so cold. I sure loved them days up there in the mountains, though I really did. Uh, you know, it just, for the most part, when I was living up there, it was at my mother-in-law's uh, house and daddy-in-law's house. And it was me and my wife and then her sister next to, next oldest sister next to her, Chloe. And then there was the brother right below her, a year younger than her, and he, that was Steve. And then there was the other daughter, sister-in-law that was right below Steve. Uh, and Steve and Annie was still in school back then. So I was, I was there when they was in elementary and I was there when they graduated high school. Well, Steve graduated, Annie didn't, Annie quit. I don't know why she did that. And that poor old girl, no, I don't know if she still owes student loans or not. I don't know. I don't know, but I sure enjoyed them days up there. And the family, and there was always family coming by and just on holidays and stuff like that. And Christmas, boy, you couldn't stir them. They were so thick in there. Just everybody, and there was a bunch of us smokers, and we smoked in the house. I don't know how the non-smokers stood it. I really don't. <laughs> I used to, <laughs> my sister-in-law, Chloe, more not a year older than my wife, she smoked, uh, I forget what brand it was, but they were filters, and they were, they were long king ones, and she kept them in a little pouch. <laughs> I, I was always up to something like that, but I'd take that, when she wasn't looking, I'd take that pouch, and I'd open it up, and I'd get that pack of cigarettes out, and take two or three cigarettes out of the pack, and turn them upside down, and stick them back in the pack, with the, with the non-filter in, showing up that, and then I would turn the pack of cigarettes upside down in her, Pouch. <laughs> oh my gosh, she'd run me down sometime beating on me when I <laughs> Of course, I'd be sitting over just waiting for her to grab them things. <laughs> oh, I put salt in her coffee one time. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Put salt in the coffee. <laughs> and that really got her. Because <laughs> she had to make another cup. And we always had a pot of coffee all day long and big part of the night. <laughs> Lord, oh, Lordy. She died. That gone it. She died before my wife did that. Uh, broke my heart. She, she's the one got me and my wife acquainted. 
her and her boyfriend that she died um everybody dying man I mean, sooner or later we all are, but if you're not one of the ones, the sooner you you go through losing a lot of them. You really do. I'm wanting to go to my family reunion. It's Labor Day every Labor Day weekend. Been going since the 30s. And the last time I went was 30 years ago. I, I quit going when my grandson was born because of his being mixed or biracial. And there was some racial people in my family. And uh, so the last time I went, about all of my aunts and uncles and and all my cousins were living, and it was, you know, you, you, I can just close my eyes and hear there was, uh, there was, uh, six girls and four boys, ten kids my grandma had. And them six girls, man, when they get in that place where we had the reunion, I mean, it was just one mass. It sounded like being in a, a a chicken barn with a bunch of chickens getting all upset about something, clucking away. And I mean, they did. But that's music to my ears. Here, I, I won't hear, don't, there's only one of them kids alive, alive today, and that's Aunt Dorothy. And Aunt Dorothy wasn't so much the clucker as the rest of them was. I mean, she was in there, but she's 99 now, I think. Another one of my aunts that died last year, Aunt Mamie, she wasn't a clucker either. I mean, she talked, but she wasn't she wasn't loud like that other bunch was. And she died last year, and about a month after she died, her son, one of my favorite first cousins, he died. And she knew he was dying when she died because he he was so sick he had cancer. He was so sick, he couldn't even come to his mama's funeral. That's how bad off he was. And I wanted to talk to him, but I, I would have had to go up there because it was just too difficult and him in bed like he was and stuff. Uh, his name was Lewis. And boy, he's, I, he taught me how to swim. And it didn't take him but about one minute to teach me how to swim. And he didn't even get in the water to teach me. I wouldn't go in the water, so, and he picked me up threw me in that darn creek. And it won't shallow. But guess what? I was swimming. <laughs> I was swimming. And he said, I'm done you just like my daddy did me and Franklin. He, he said, it's, you either sink or swim. <laughs> and we swam. <laughs> Hey, boy, golly, Ned, what a wonderful man that was. Him him and my other, his brother, Frankie. Uh, I always appreciated Lewis being around.
because Lewis was taller than him and about two years older than Frankie. And if I find, thought Frankie needed some come, come up, as I call it, Lewis was always the man to go to and tell him what Frankie was doing. <laughs> and Frankie was my hero. He's still living, but his, his health's not good. He's up in his 80s. But yeah, Lewis taught me how to swim. And he taught me something else. They was gonna do a fishing trip. Well, they did a fishing trip. And he had this big old jet type boat thing. It, it didn't have a propeller, it had jet propulsion on it. Jet water propulsion. And he taught me how to be punctual. In other words, don't be late for appointments. Don't be late. Especially don't be late when you're doing something with him. Because I was, I was coming out, I was coming out the door and he'd been sitting there about five minutes blowing his horn. I wasn't ready. So about 10 minutes later, I come strolling out the door with my stuff. And guess what I saw? I saw that truck with that boat going down the road. <laughs> he told me that day, he said, said, Mackie, when I tell you 7 o'clock, that's 7 o'clock. That's not 10 after, that's 7 o'clock. And I'll bet you won't be late again. And he's right. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> uh, and he was a veteran, you know. He was, Frankie was too. There was a bunch of us cousins who went to the military. <laughs> well, gosh, uh, that's enough reminiscing about. <laughs> I sure love them guys. They they was my heroes. I wanted to be just like them, and I never could measure up and be quite the person they turned out to be. I I I I I I. I, 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 I <laughs> there I go to I uh, again. I didn't have the upbringing them boys had. I, they had education and uh, stuff, you know, and and I I just did. I didn't have that. I was strong from here to yonder, you know, with ants knuckles all over the place, and nobody really giving me any direction in life, and. Uh, I had what I learned. I had to learn on my own, and I, I I guess I'm glad I learned how to build furniture because that was my mainstay for most of my life. But that was two wonderful boys. It sure was. Um, and I loved them both. I loved that ain't Mamie. That ain't Mamie was like a mama to me. That was her mama. The last time I talked to her, it was on the phone, and and she said, "Well, I declare." She started talking to me and said, "Mackie, are you right with the Lord?" She always, she always come out with that. Are you right with the Lord? Uh That was, I don't believe in saints, but if there was a saint, she would have been a saint. That was, and that's, and that, by the way, that's the lady that punched my mama right in the mouth, knocked her plumb out the back door of my grandmama's house, because she found my mama and her husband 
Not my mama's husband, but Aunt Mamie's husband, Uncle Jack. She found some letters that her and Uncle Jack been writing to each other. And she, boy, she punched her. She didn't punch her out, but she put her out that door. And Mama deserved every bit of it. And I suppose... I suppose my mama was fooling around on my daddy from the get-go. I suppose. Because I, I can pull four or five of her she's had right off the top of my head. My baby sister, the one that was uh, born in 63 and give up for adoption the same day. That was out of an affair she was having when her other husband, my stepfather, Bob, was laying up there in the hospital with TB and dying. And she was having an affair with this other guy and got pregnant. Um, of course, Bob won't know Saint neither. I can tell you some stuff about him. I won't get into that, but I'll... I'll say it was it was sexual abuse. And well hell I might as well say who it was. It was my sister the one year younger than me and I didn't know about this till about four or five years ago and Carolyn told me that. Uh Oh, well, now I'm going to mess around here and get myself in a bad mood, so I'm stopping that. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Promise. Hope this one wasn't too long. <sighs> see you later, guys. I really, I really, really appreciate having you guys. This, this. This helps me so much, uh, just having y'all. It really does. Maybe you don't think so, but it does. So, with that, GoPro stop recording. <laughs>